Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. Well, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're continuing with carb basics and all the rest of it. So there's a few things that I've I've actually covered in the um, oh, flow dynamics video, but we're going to go through it again because this is basically on based on carbs. So we're going to talk about how they basically work in the most basic function. So, um, before I was talking about fuel balls, and then we have a thing what you call a um, venturi. So, what a venturi is, is that there's this thing that happens with air that if you accelerate it, it basically spreads out. So, the best way to think about it is, let me just find it. <laughs> So a good way to think about it is just think about a, a slinky, so to speak. So what happens is, is you can see that, I don't know well you can see this, but you can see that we're quite dense here and then all of a sudden, imagine this is air, imagine this is there's a, a, a continuous slinky, and then all of a sudden we accelerate the air. So you see that we're quite dense here and then we're basically spaced out here. That's what we need to do with the air. How do we do this? We do this like you do with a... Um, Oh, uh, put your finger over the end of a nozzle of a um, oh, watering hose. So basically we've got a large cross section here, so this is a big hole here, this is a smaller hole here. This is like putting your thumb on the end and you know reducing the, the area, the cross sectional area that the air can pass through. So as we're passing through here, the air's passing through here like this, and then you basically create what we call a nozzle, which means it reduces in cross section like this. Now when we do this, just like air, uh, water in a garden hose type thing, is that it accelerates and it squirts further. And basically all it is, is it's all the air bunching up and they repel each other and then they start basically firing out. Which is what we're doing with our slinky example, is it's all dense there and then when we get to this bit where we're firing it through, it's spacing out. Now why do we do this? What happens is, is if we look at pressure, we can just say we have um, 100 Pascal, 1000 Pascals, I'm just going to use Pascals because it's a, you know, one bar is one, so easy maths. And just say here it's 900, just for example, that's not what it is, but let's just go with that. So you can see it's dropped, and in a sense, because this pressure has dropped, then there's room for other stuff. So what we do is in the centre of this is we have a, a little pipe basically going into your fuel like so, like this and an orifice here, and we'll get rid of this circle because that's confusing, like this. And as this lower pressure air flies past, um, the pressure drops. Now, the pressure being applied to um, the fuel in the fuel bowl is a thousand, let's just say a thousand pascals like that, and the pressure keeping the fuel inside this tube here is 900. 900 so obviously it's going to squirt up um, because there's more force on the outside of the fuel uh, the fuel in the fuel ball on the outside of this tube than there is in the tube so the fuel actually goes up it goes up into the stream and then it's picked up by the air as it goes past like that it starts to evaporate because it is a lower pressure region that's what happens and basically that is the function of carbs and what we do is to meter and this is the most important thing about injection and carbs is we need to meter it, which basically means we need to control the amount. And what we do is we put our main jet in there, which is basically a little brass plug with a hole in it, so that we have a fuel rate. This might force down, and the faster you go, the lower the pressure drop and all this, but this meters how much fuel can actually pass through per second um, up this tube, so we have a way of controlling it. The other thing as well is if you put a jet in, that means that if you want to change it in any way, you can back that out and put a one with a bigger or smaller smaller hole in it. Basically gives us the uh, ability to change the metering um, amount, you know, change the metering level or the, the flow rate basically of fuel. So that's uh, part two of this series. This is basically what we are trying to do. We have, we know why we have a fuel ball and now we understand what this um, bigger and smaller uh, cross section is so on this carb you can see we've got a big opening there and a small opening on the back you can actually physically see it 
Next thing we need to cover is how we actually throttle this, how we actually control this. We don't just want a continuous uh, static amount of fuel, we want to be able to uh, richen and lean it off. Not so much lean it off, but enriching it and then bring it back down to our uh, set uh, metering volume. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit. 